What is going on you guys? Chachi come back at you with another video. Today a little bit of a different video. I got two guests on. We're going to be discussing some balance change wish list ideas for this upcoming season. And today on the channel, we got my good old friend the KOJ, better known as the Kaj. How's it going, buddy? Hey man, I'm breathing. I'm breathing, man. How are you doing? Hanging in there, hanging in there. Good quarantine vibes. And we also got my boy Darren240. How's it going, Darren? I'm doing pretty good. Now I'm at you, Chachi. I'm doing amazing, man. I can't wait. We're going to be talking about some great balance change ideas. We each got a big list that we're going to be going through. So this may be a little bit of a longer video and a little bit different. So, Darren, I think you should open up the ropes. You got three balance changes right now that we're going to go over. You can go ahead and kick it off, and we'll uh, mm. we'll see if it's a hit or miss from the two judges. All right, so I think that Baby Dragon needs a 5% HP nerf. Um, mm. I do believe Tesla needs a 4% damage nerf. And I believe that Loon Death Damage needs a small nerf as well. Okay. And you want to describe a little bit on why you think the nerfs uh, that you have are going to be what fixes it or like what's wrong with like tesla right now that makes it strong that you think like that a damage nerf would fix it okay so like it doesn't have to be a damage nerf it can also be like i wanted overall dps to be nerfed so like an attack damage like an attack speed nerf would be fine with me as well okay so um i just think it gets too much defensive value because it like three shots musketeers and like you know what i mean so it like four shots megas and it just makes defense is way too easy because you can play it in the middle and like you can kite something to the middle if you're saying run, running 2.9 or like ice bow gotcha and gotcha it just gets infinite value at that point all right the, the baby dragon nerf will be hurt like it'll be hurt a little bit with the nerf to tornado but it's still running pekka decks it's still running lava hound decks it's still running most graveyard decks even without the tornado ones this uh snowball musketeer hut version for example doesn't run uh tornado <clears throat> and the loon death damage nerf it it just doesn't let you counter push so they can play eight elixir nine elixir at the river and say you drop a minion hold on it and you don't get any sort of counter push because the loon death damage just wipes out your entire counter push at that point yeah no i i agree definitely 100 percent with the list i I don't like those three cards you mentioned. Uh, Balloon is actually one of my cards that I want tweaked. Um, I think the death damage is really strong, and I know uh, my f good friend Logical Warfare would totally agree with that because it <laughs> just gets so much damage off, and even if you perfectly defend it, it's going to get that death damage, and it's just really annoying. Um, but other than that, I, I agree with your list. I could also see maybe like a uh, timer reduction on to your um, uh, Tesla, Instead of the damage, you could do that, or you could stick with the damage. Uh, Kaj, any thoughts? Uh, I'm not gonna say I entirely agree. Um, my thoughts, my thoughts go like this. I'll, I'll start from the, I guess from the bottom. I'll, I'll go backwards. With the balloon, I, I do agree. Next, this next meta, I don't agree. This meta, I don't. I know that logical obviously has had some problems with it for a while, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really don't have that big of a deal with it, man. And it's like the thing is when you play balloon it, it's just like that's the only value you really get is this death damage it's so hard to get it to the tower sometimes i mean just because of how heavily used tornado is and how strong it is at the moment so it's like the only thing you really get off of it is just the death damage 90 percent of the time that's how i feel anyway but i do think you know the tornado nerf is coming i so i think after that that nerf hits i think balloon is about to wreak havoc so that's why I partially agree. I don't think I don't think it would need it right now, but with the meta upcoming, yeah, I think balloon's going to be a real problem. Um, as far as the Tesla goes, though, I partially agree on that one also because it's like I don't think it needs a damage nerf in the sense that uh, it should be it should be like uh, how much damage it does. Because if you remember, the reason they buffed Tesla in the first place was to one shot minions, um, which I don't mind. I don't mind it one shotting minions. I think that it should just get a like it's the speed at which it it fires should be slowed down because that would yeah. kind of defeat the purpose all all together of the one shotting minions if you nerf it back down to where it takes two takes two shots to kill a minion 
So, but I do agree, it does way too much freaking damage, especially when you're dealing with like Expo and stuff like that. Um, so I do think it should fire off slower, for sure. And then Baby Dragon, oh man, you guys know I've been I've been crying about Baby Dragon for a long time, for a long time. But I, I again, I partially agree because I think it should be much more heavier than that. Like I don't think it should be a five percent, um, like HP nerf. I think it should die to lightning. Like a hundred percent should die to lightning. It just Baby Dragon ruins the entire game for me. Like, um, I don't think it's talked about enough. Um, the problem with it is this. People say that, oh, it's a good card because it's the only air splash damage card. And I, I don't agree with that. I don't think it's just because it can fly and do splash damage. I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is the fact that it, it you just can't kill it. It just doesn't die. It it gives you way too much value. Um, and it does just enough damage to, to where you can't ignore it, like, on your tower. It, you know, it, it's still a good offensive weapon as well as, as its overpowered defenses defensive capabilities so to me it wrecks the game because of this all other splash damage cards are completely useless like they're doing these big talks about like you know they were talking about like bringing the wizard down to four elixir and all that sort of stuff and they tried to really change the witch and change the executioner and i thought that that was just they were they were shooting down the wrong hallways. I don't think that there's that really big of a deal with those cards necessarily. I just think that it, they're they're so overshadowed by the baby dragon because again, the witch is five elixir, the wizard is five elixir, the executioner is five elixir. It's just why would you pay the five elixir for any of those cards when you can spend one less elixir and pretty much have a better card? And it's like sure the wizard does more damage, but you can just fight in the not a lightning. Yeah, but that's what that's my point. It doesn't die to lightning, right? So it's like the witch, the wizard, it's like you can take care of them pretty easily with um the executioner just kinda fires too slow. That's real and, and it costs one more elixir than the baby dragon. But I do believe if like you were to take the baby dragon out of the game, I think executioner would be used more than, than witch and wizard for sure. It would kinda be that next card up to fill that void. But again, that's not because it does more damage necessarily, because I think the wizard does the most damage. I think it's just the fact that you can't kill the executioner. So to me, when it comes to splash range troops altogether, I think you should be able to get rid of them with spells. The same thing with Ice Wizard. I, I think it should die to Fireball. Um, but the problem is, Ice Wizard is a problem to get rid of for three elixir. Baby Dragon is a problem to get rid of because you can't kill it at all unless you're rocket it, but that's a negative two elixir trade. Um, and then you combine that with Tornado, and, and that that's why you see that defensive combo so much and you know it's everywhere and it's, just, it's so hard to break through so to me baby dragon just ruins the game I, I like and for people that are listening i hate it when people go oh if you just make it out of lightning then the card's just dead look like duh you're gonna buff other areas of the card i don't mind it doing more damage or something like that to make up for to make up for the the h I just think you should be able to get rid of it in the same way that you get rid of Witch and get and get rid of Wizard, and I think that it will allow the other splash cards some room to shine, and then you can make that the difference between like single targeting troops, you know, because it's like the only reason you would ever use a single like targeting troop would be because maybe it'll live a little longer. Like I'm I'm okay with Musketeer splash, so I'm I'm kind of a uh, okay with it but when it comes to the splash damage troops they shouldn't be able to do splash be ranged and not die all at the same time it just provides way too much value and for only four elixir the baby dragon is ridiculous what was your other card oh i was commenting on yours I was yeah he was commenting on his i i really like the uh the idea of baby dragon a light dying to lightning the only thing i fear about is then like lightning becoming like super meta like it was a couple metas ago um do you think that they should like buff one of like the other splash cards to like exchange that, or like do you agree that lightning would be used a lot more, or what? Do, what do you think about that? Um, just as being like the devil's advocate. I mean, I don't think that lightning would really become ridiculous. I think the reason lightning was so overused at one point, I mean, it really had a lot to do with the three musketeer meta in my memory, anyways. Um, it was a really big deal, but. Um, Three Musketeers really isn't as prevalent anymore because they really kind of attacked it. Um, I also think that there's a lot, of, you know, a lot of swarm right now kind of going on. 
um, and what you would have used lightning on before, Earthquake now takes care of. Like, lightning was like the get rid of the Goblin Hut, get rid of the Expo kind of card for the longest. But now with Earthquake, it's like a lot of that. Or, or get rid of Inferno Towers. Like, with the emergence of Earthquake and how, how dominant it's been, and with Three Musketeers taking the hit that they've taken, and with Graveyard being so strong, I still think Poison and Earthquake are going to probably be the predominant spells over Earth over over Lightning, even in those situations. So, I mean, you got to think. It's like one of the most annoying decks right now has to do with that freaking E-Golem. Um, yeah, E-Golem you know, uh, uh, Yeah, Electro Dragon deck. And again, that's the only thing that holds Electro Dragon back, really, is just the fact that it dies to Lightning. If, if you made it like the Baby Dragon, where it doesn't die to Lightning, E-Dragon would be... It, why even play the be... game? Yeah, <laughs> you know, it'd, it'd be ridiculous. So, so the fact that, that deck can still be so popular and so annoying, you know, I eat with a with a card like E with E Dragon that will die to lightning. I just don't think that lightning would really be that much of a problem for like a baby dragon user or something like that. But again, I would say buff the other areas. It should it should just die to a spell for four elixir. It's just it's ridiculous that you could spend two more elixir and and not be able to kill it. Okay. All right. Well. uh so we got our thoughts on Darren's. Kaj, you're the next up. Let's hear three cards from you. What do you got changing this next meta? Well, the Baby Dragon was my, my big one, as, as you probably picked up on. <laughs> I, I cannot stand it. Um, so I'm going to be more creative on mine. Rather okay. than cards that I think have, like, they need to be nerfed, I'm going to kind of go over some, over some reworks. The first one I'm going to go over is Zappies. So here's my idea on Zappies. Zappies is like, uh, I mean, we heard uh, Seth, I believe, talk about it, and his take on it was, well, they don't really want to buff it because it's kind of annoying because it just, it freezes everything in place, which I do mm -hmm. agree with. That card is really freaking annoying. <laughs> um, and I do, I do not think it should be buffed to be like in the meta with the way that it, that it works right now, which I tried to buff it a little bit, and I'm happy they didn't overdo it and bring it like strong into the meta. My solution to that would be something along the lines of change the card in this sense. This is my idea. I like the fact that there's three. I like the fact that you can split them. I think you should make the two in the back be like your damage dealers, but they don't stun. And the one in the front is like your stunner. That way you can hmm. buff the card and it doesn't completely freeze everything by buffing it. Now, to make it like discernible, maybe like change the color of the one up front or make it the one up front like like bigger or something you know just make it obvious so kind of like, like the know. rascals yeah in a sense but okay. that you know that they serve a way different purpose like mm -hmm. the, the rascals is just a knight and archer yeah right? yeah, yeah. But it, but like there's a the, you know it's a different card but it's you the know same. the zappies are a different card. yeah it just okay. it would feel way different so i think the two in the back should be the just the damage dealers but they don't stun and the one in the front should be the stunner and then that way they can buff the damage of maybe the, the the two in the back so that way like it does some serious damage and only the one up front stuns that way you don't have like this you know like a giant coming down the lane and it literally can't even move or something like that you know mm -hmm. so um and then if you can get rid of just that first one then you, you you do away with the stunning of of the zappies um so that's my idea to kind of make the card like a a little bit more diverse and it mm -hmm. allows you to buff it and bring it into the meta without it without it doing what seth was talking about where it just it just stuns something completely in place. I think that makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, my other one, number two, is the cannon cart. So the thing with the cannon cart is this. It costs too much. It moves too fast. It's like, you know, you can't really build by putting the cannon cart in the back. Mm -hmm. um, so pretty much what you're banking on is defending with the cannon cart and hoping that it doesn't die in your defense. And then that way you can do like a counter push with it. I think that's why the cannon car sucks. And plus it's like a single unit targeting like troop. It doesn't do splash. So it's really hard. And they like you know, and it and it's its wheels portion of its life is really low. So it's kinda easy to get it off of its wheels, which completely completely negates its like counter push capabilities. So you might as well look at it as just like a strictly a de defensive car. That's the way that I kinda look at it. My thing is with the cannon car, they they missed an opportunity. To me, it was like there was a long time where we were begging for like a legendary building. Mm -hmm. The cannon car was supposed to be the legendary building. That's what I think. So the way you would make it the legendary building is this. You would make it the only building in the game that also targets buildings. So 
the reason I think that's creative and it would make it useful is because it'd be the only card in the game that you could kite other building targeting units with. Like, you can't kite a golem. You can't kite a giant. You can't kite a balloon. You can't do any of that sort of stuff. But imagine if you had a card that could. I think that they want to they change the meta. They want to add, like, a whole new archetype to the game. Like, when they tried to say that with e-golems, like, e-golem didn't... That wasn't a whole new archetype. That was just really annoying beatdown. Like, that's all that it was. So it's just... <laughs> If you want to make cra- yeah, so if you want to create like a whole new archetype, to me that that that's something that you would do. So my idea would be to make the cannon card target building. So how it would work is this: you lower its speed a little bit. I don't want it to go as fast as it does because then there's, it's not going to kite the golem because it's, it's moving too fast. So slow it down. So you place it down. You can kite it. It could go to the other lane, kite the golem to the other lane, whatever, and it would still target the building. Now, once it gets knocked off its wheels, then it becomes a normal cannon, so it'll shoot anything. But I think that the wheel portion should target buildings. And hmm. then, you know, to me, that that's a whole brand new archetype. It'd be the only card in the game like it. There is no building in the game that also targets buildings. So I think that's a, a nice fix that would give the cannon card its own spot to shine, where they're not constantly, like, buffing it and nerfing it, and it just pushes it way too hard into the meta then takes it completely out of the meta you know that makes sense to me and then uh my last one i think i'll do e-barbs e-barbs because <laughs> yeah. there's like you know people are talking about we should remove it from the game and all that sort of stuff i, I don't mm-hmm. think that they should be re- my thing with e-barbs is obviously they move they move fast but they don't do a whole lot of damage it's like look they're elite I think they should be the only unit in the game that's a dual tank u- unit, like a split lane like type of unit, but it's like two tanks. I think their health should be just jacked like way up, but their speed should be knocked all the way down. So I think they should move slow. It's like, dude, they're they're elite. As slow as I a watch. golem. Um, I think maybe or a maybe knight. They walk like or regular like... barbs. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, something. I, th- I think that the speed should be knocked all the way down. Cause that's the part of the reason why. They're annoying because the whole like e bar, you know, they're at the bridge with the rage and they're mm-hmm. over leveled and yada yada. Um, I think you slow them all the way down, maybe not as slow as a golem, maybe a step above, you know, but somewhere in there and you jack their health way up. You make them like, um, that way you can split them. I mean, you can put them in the same lane if you want. Now, you keep their attack power slow. I like how their attack power is slow, so you can surround them with skeletons or something like that. Mm-hmm. But the point is, if you can split them, they'll be the only card in the game like that where you can split them and like actually have two legit tanks up front where you know you can support both of them yada yada do some that to me makes the the e-barbs it gives them a spot in the game to fill because right now it's just there there is no role for them that another card doesn't already do better but you give them an opportunity to be the only dual lane tank i think that makes a lot of sense and then you can adjust the stats accordingly obviously all that sort of stuff but that kind of gives them their own platform. I think that fixes the e-bar problem. So those are my three. Dang, that's a lot of very, very unique stuff. Uh, Darren, you want to comment first? Any thoughts? You agree, um, disagree? I don't exactly know where you're going with the e-bars. So my question Maybe for you is... Clarify. <clears throat> so what kind of health buff do you think like we mean? So are we talking about like two princes or two mini P.E.K.K.A.s or two ice golems like what kind of like what range of health is it going to be because that that can be a lot of hp i mean yeah that's true i mean i was leaving that up to the balancers you know just i was just ballparking it like you know but i guess it depends on how much elixir they cost right if it's if it's for six elixir hmm i don't know i'd want to say like ice golem but maybe that's even still a little bit too low I'm not entirely sure, considering they would move slow. Um, but maybe Ice Golem is about right about right where you said it. I mean, I wouldn't want to overdo it. I mean, it's hard. I mean, I don't, I'm not on the balance of this team, so I can't like, give an exact number. But if I'm guessing, I mean, I would say at 6 Elixir, maybe maybe Ice Golem, maybe a little more. Um, if you lowered it, their Elixir down, I'm okay with that. Uh, I think you could get really creative with it. Because um, the thing is, it's going to be hard to get them to the tower. Anything that doesn't attack a building like straight up, that only that doesn't do splash, it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to get them to the tower. So I don't really mind them having a good chunk of health. Um, 
just because of that reason, especially if you keep their attack speed slow like it is, because they they attack like a, a like a big Pekka right now. It feels like mm-hmm. so easy to counter them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more about the support troops behind them that's really gonna do the work for them, you know. Um, but as far as like the how much health they have, I mean enough to be respectable, you know. But yeah, I wouldn't overdo it. It just depends on how much you make them cost. I feel. Any other comments on his cards, Darren? Mm, no. Remind me of the three again. I I only remember the last two that you did. It was uh. I thought yeah. he was four. E-barbs. Oh, he he agreed with the baby dragon. Uh, needing yeah. to die to lightning. We didn't count that, but no, so it was e barbs. It was and E-Barbs, it was the cannon cart that you make it attack buildings, yep. and then it was the, the zappies to make the two in the back do the da- be the damage dealers, and the one okay. at the front is the stunner. Okay. Yeah, I, I I love zappies. They're one of my favorite cards in the game, so being able to see them like getting some sort of rework definitely excites me. I really just love the fact that they, they stun and they do clog up lanes. No matter what Seth says, that's the best part about them. Um, just being able to, you know, if you can get a perma stun on it, it's just it's the best feeling in the world. But definitely I want to see them get some sort of change. So maybe if you make, again, I don't know if you meant like just keep the, the, the front zappy that does stun, like do his normal stun. Or if he's like an E-Wiz back in the day where it did one second instead of half a second like it does right now. Um but the cannon car is probably the most interesting one that you said to me, at least. I, I think that's hilarious, seeing like a cannon, uh, a building going across. I feel like it would infuriate a lot of people, almost like Expo, but at the same time, it wouldn't because, you know, it's so slow and it's coming across the bridge. And honestly, the shield right now doesn't have a whole bunch of HP. Maybe get a, uh, just anything onto it. Uh, it's going to be able to take it out. So I think it'd be a really, really nice, unique change. And it'd definitely like freshen up the can cart, make it viable. I know we've seen it a little bit more in this meta, um, but still being able to see it a little more outside this specific meta because of uh, the cards that are in and trying to counter it. I think it would be really, really cool to <laughs> see the can cart just attack buildings. It'd be so cool to kite and just do all those cool things that you can't do with it right now. But... Thanks. Other than that, um, I think it's uh, it's about time to get to my list, my three cards. Um, so my three cards, uh, Darren, you already touched on one with the Loon uh, Death Damage, so I won't go over that again. I think the Death Damage needs to get toned down just a little bit, maybe like 5% or so, not too much. Um, yeah, but, crazy. Yeah, nothing crazy. Um, I do think that the Battle Healer needs some sort of rework. It is the most frustrating card, I think, and I love the card. <laughs> like, I love playing it. It's one of those cards you love playing, but you hate yeah. versing it. Like, And if your opponent doesn't have an answer for it, you you win. You steamroll them, you stack two Battle Healers down, there's nothing that's going to kill it. Um, so I'm proposing a, um, a max HP healing effect. Um, so just like in Clash of Clans, the healer, if you clump up all your troops into one pile, I believe the healer does 500 max damage. So it doesn't matter if there's 500 troops or one troop, you're always going to have, um, a maximum cap. So you can't just stack healers. So, um, if you have a battle healer, let's say in Clash Royale, it has a max healing effect of 200. If there's five troops in there, it's going to get evenly divided. Or let's just say four. So each troop gets 50 uh, heal I guess um, and if there's one troop let's just say right now I don't know exactly the number of what it heals per swing um, Darren or Kaj do you guys know the exact number or no no I definitely don't know okay. it doesn't show it in the stats or yeah that's what I was going to say it doesn't really show it in the stats but uh, let's just say for example it's 50 uh, just to keep it nice so if it's 50 right now and you have one troop in there it's still going to do 50 but if you have four in there it's going to do 200 uh, total but 50 to each of the four and then if you have 10, it's only going to do 20 healing to every single one. So it's not going to allow you to just keep steamrolling, keep those E-drags and everything. And that's going to prevent you just from just dropping Eagle and Battle Healer, having all the blobs staying alive forever. To me, at least, that's going to affect it. Or you could make it so the heal uh, would only affect the ground. Um, so ground troops, because for me, I feel like the bats and the uh, lava pups and the um, E-dragons are the main problem, but... Um, that could probably be a little bit of a tweak in game because of the heal spirit. It'd be different, so maybe not as viable there. Um, so that's my second card, and then my third card is 
Expo! I hate that card so much. I know it's not super strong right now, but if the meta was different than the meta previously, I feel like Expo was everywhere, and it was just like, if you didn't have EQ in your deck, your opponent would just sit back, keep cycling fireballs, and just spell you out from the other side once they get one connection. Um, so I think like a a uh, timer duration would be pretty cool on that. So uh, eliminating the amount of time that the Expo's alive for, kind of like how they did with the Bomb Tower and the Tesla, they reduced it. So going from like one minute, I'd like to see it go down to like 50 seconds because it did get an HP buff back a couple of metas ago. Um, so I want to see some sort of scale back because it's not really fun when you see people just keep stacking expos on defense and throwing fireballs at your tower. You're like, oh my goodness, he has two expos down. He's about to throw down a third one once this next one dies. So it's just like crazy. So I'd like to see an HP ner or a, um, a timer nerf on the expo and then a, either a cap on the battle healer heal effect or a, um, a ground only healing aura and then balloon death damage. Um, so uh, Darren, agree or disagree? Um, I sort of agree with, wait, what was the middle one? Um, so it's Battle Healer, Expo, and Balloon. Okay, so Balloon, I 100% agree with. Okay. Battle Healer, I do, but I would do something a little different. I would personally just decrease the hit speed, because the hit speed is, like, the issue, because it heals so much, like, it heals continuously, continuously, over and over, and it hits so fast that, like, it does next to no damage, but where it heals so much, it heals, like, 300 HP a hit, probably, but I'm pretty sure it's around there. <clears throat> and, like, it can heal a drag all the way up to full HP in, like, three, four hits. So, mm -hmm. I think it should attack a little slower, or at least have, like, the first attack slower, so you can connect the Fireball Zap on the units, or Fireball Arrows, and because you can like right now you can heal a minion horde through arrows <clears throat> which is kind of wild that is kind of crazy <laughs> <laughs> if you time it perfectly you can heal a minion horde through arrows and i think that's crazy yeah, and that i do nice. believe that it would be a good change to nerf the battle healer some sort of way i think she has a little too much hp so maybe a nerf to that too otherwise i completely agree okay kosh um kind of partially agree okay. partially so my thing is with the i'll go i'll go battle healer first so with the battle healer my thing is that if you do knock her out of the game you essentially knock the eagle and out of the game too like the eagle and they've nerfed it enough to it to where at this point um you take her out and it, it's no longer a good card so you have to figure out some something to do with the eagle Lum as well, which I do think the eagle Lum, I do think they kind of did it dirty in in just its nurse in just its nurse like minus the battle healer. I I didn't think that the nurse that they did to it was what the real problem was. Um, I think they could revert them. My thing my thing with it is all you'd have to really do for me is delete the middle phase of the eagle Lum, like the the two kind of golemite type of eagle and ones mm -hmm. you just delete that phase so it kind of breaks up and immediately goes to the i'm on, i'm on board with it like at that point i it's the middle phase that i think is it that's what's just too much it's just too much because there's way too many pretty much lives if you will on its way down to your tower it's like but, a cat uh, it's got nine lives <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's freaking ridiculous but if they just delete just that middle phase like the two eagle the golemite ish type I phase i think it's i think it'd be just fine you could buff it back to how it originally was and i think you know you could just like fireball the four and kind of be done with it mm -hmm. um and you get your elixir your... back right there yeah yeah exactly so i think i think that this is just that middle phase i think just makes it a little bit broken and why they can't really buff it um as far as as far as the battle healer goes though i do agree with both you guys but just like darian said um i i I have a different way of dealing with it. I do agree with it. It should be attacking slower. I'm not quite on board with like the the, the dividing health. It's just too much math. It's too much yeah. math at that point. Um, so I think that I do. I definitely side more with Darian on like it attacking slower. But my other thing is that it, it just it has way too much health. Like it's so hard to kill it. 
Like, it's so difficult to get rid of it. It doesn't die to a rocket or a spiky shot. It doesn't die to a giant skeleton bomb. Mm -hmm. Like, it just, it just doesn't die. It doesn't make sense. So, it, like, all of those things you just said, rocket, giant skeleton bomb, it, it needs to die at least to those, at a minimum, if not more than that. If you can get rid of the battle healer, I think that, you know, that's just fine. You know, it, it'll work it'll work out perfectly. But it's the fact that you can't kill it, which forces you to not be able to kill anything else. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that's definitely my two. The lesson, the healing, and it shouldn't have as much health as it does. As far as Expo goes, man, it's tough. I hate Expo. You know I hate it. <laughs> but like, I, can, I, you know, I try to be, like, objective, and I can see the other side. Like, the problem with Expo is it's – it's good or it's terrible depending on what, what it's facing. Yeah. You know? So it's like that that's what makes it such a difficult thing to deal with. I do think it should be buffed, but I think it shouldn't it, it, it needs to have a tile range deduction. Like if you can just take away that tile where it has to be placed at the bridge so you can no longer squeeze that Tesla in there and then squeeze that ice golem in there, and then squeeze <laughs> those little skeletons in there and then throw your ice spirit at it. You know, it's like if you can just take away that one tile to where like you're you know, you're 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 uh your wind condition can kind of go straight to it rather than have to go to the Tesla first. And then we already talked about how the Tesla just eats everything alive. Yeah. So it's like that to me, that's the biggest thing. If, if you can just take away that tile, I don't mind buffing it. I don't mind. I don't mind how long it lives. I don't mind it surviving uh, the rocket. I don't mind it even doing more damage than it already does. If you can just take away that tile so you can get to the thing. Um, that That's how I feel about it. So that's, that's kind of how it Okay. Well, geez, we've already been going at it for 30 minutes, so we do. We only got through nine cards. We'll do a quick speed round here. You got one final card that you can implement right now, the change. Um, Darren, we'll start off with you, and while we're doing that, I'm going to show off your guys' profiles because you guys are beasts, and let's see it. Darren, what do you got? Darren, you die? You all right? Nerf firecracker. Nerf firecracker. All right, what you gonna do with firecracker? Yes. People are hating on the firecracker. Take all of that. It nerfs. It knocks itself back like six miles, like continuously. <laughs> it's like it's like me standing in Uganda. And it's like let me fly to Paris. <laughs> okay. And like you can't because it jukes spells. It jukes units. It makes a mega knight go all the way to the king tower. You can't even deal with it, no matter what. Jeez. It doesn't die to log, so you can't just get it off the map. So any deck, like it's so polarizing. Any deck that doesn't have log or like double small spell, I mean that doesn't have arrows or double small spell, then it's just broken because you can abuse it and you can win every bridge battle and continuously block for it with ice golem, skellies, bats, ice spirit, zap, like any unit that blocks, and you just can't kill it. Like I don't mind the damage. I don't mind the hit speed. I just think it should knock itself back a little less. Okay. Kaj, your card? Can you go, like, just to Egypt? It is a pretty annoying card. Yeah. I don't really know. <laughs> man, yeah, you just got to reduce it. It's knockback. A, a, a hair. A hair. Just a hair. Yeah, just, just a little bit. A few, like, four tiles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm kind of I'm kind of struggling with this one because I have a couple that I'm really trying to decide between. Yeah? So, yeah, I really am. Oh so man, I'll give, you, I'll give you a couple, and you tell me which one you want me to. to take okay, over. okay, we'll do All a right? quick vote. So one, wall breakers. Okay. Two, the bomber. Three, graveyard. I think that's a that's a safe three. All or, skeletons. Or, or, or. Okay, okay. Um, let's go with uh, Darren. You got a choice. I want to hear your thoughts about graveyard. I figured. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's hear uh, it. Graveyard. Coming from the graveyard one trick over here. Yeah. Yeah, it's very true. <laughs> the thing, the thing with graveyard is that it's man. I mean, even when it first came into the game, people were complaining about how like you know it's just it's it's so random. Like you can't really plan for it, you know, because the skeletons pop up random and yada yada. I don't really. It is a problem. However. I think it does have a fix because you, you would ruin the card if you make them all come in like a sequenced order every single time. Um, so I think the solution is twofold. Either either one, because right now I believe they have it to where the skeletons spawn on the outside of the ring. So either one, you make graveyard even even bigger, 
because that's the thing about graveyard it's like it's the only spell in the game where like the bigger it's 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 radius is the worse it is actually yeah because they spawn on the outside so to me you nerf it by making it even larger than what it already is i like that idea okay or two my other idea is you you do not allow it to spawn skeletons outside of the arena so what i mean by that is it obviously it already doesn't do that but what i'm saying instead of when the for the part of the circle that's out of the arena the skeletons that that spawn there currently they just kind of spawn on the side i say the, the skeletons that would spawn on that outside of the circle that's outside of the arena they're essentially deleted they don't exist they don't exist so what that would Whoa. do is that would force <laughs> that would force graveyard users to have to put the circle much closer to the king tower which would much which would increase the risk of king tower activation because if they don't put it on that side all the skeletons that would that would essentially spawn on the outside of that circle off screen or off the stage they just instantly instantly deleted they don't exist at all whatsoever so those are my two ideas on dealing with graveyard while still allowing it to have like its random of randomness hey i got a comment on that uh second option real quick on that graveyard so you're saying keep graveyard how it is but the circle or the skeletons on the outside of the circle would just be deleted if i'm not mistaken right Yes, because you know how graveyard users. Yeah. They, what they do is they hug, they hug the inside <laughs> of the of the of the outside tower. Yeah. So like the out, so the out on the outside portion of the of the circle of the graveyard essentially is like outside of the outside of the stage. So okay. all those skeletons just kind of spawn on that side. If that makes sense. Yes, that makes more sense. All so right. to yeah, to me is like those skeletons that would spawn on the side of the stage those skeletons mm -hmm. just don't appear so any skeletons that that if you place it where the the circle is outside of the arena the skeletons that spawn on that portion of the circle they just don't come into play whatsoever they're just automatically deleted they're outside of the arena um wow. i mean <laughs> if that's too big of a nerf i mean again it's the opposite of all of the other spells so what you could do is implement that second option like i talked about mm -hmm. while also like reducing the radius of it so you could okay. buff it by reducing the radius and then nerf it by saying, "All right, if you we reduce the radius, but if you still play it outside of the, those skeletons get deleted. That spawn that would spawn in that in that portion of the circle." Gotcha. Okay, that makes more sense now. Thanks for the clarification. Well, that is gonna do it just about for today's episode. Let me know in the comments what ideas you guys agree with as well as which ideas you disagree with and let me know which one was your favorite let me know if you'd rather have the koj on the balance team or would you rather have darren on the balance team or myself included but not really because my balance changes were not the best to par but anyways appreciate you guys watching the end of the video again if you enjoyed leave that thumbs up see you guys next time peace out